I don't know if you guys are watching this video because you've seen this movie or if you just want to hear my thoughts. I hope you're just here to hear my thoughts. This movie was quite interesting. Not something I would normally pick up, but since one of you guys recommended this, I decided to check it out. I'm trying to get around to all of these recommendations. Thank you guys for taking the time to comment and recommend me movies to watch. Let's get into this movie. The Pig, the Snake, and the Pigeon. I read the title and I was like, what could this be about? If you just read the synopsis, there's not much there. This fugitive, who's the third most wanted fugitive in Taiwan and apparently he wants to be number one so he can be remembered after he passes because apparently he has terminal lung cancer and doesn't have much time to live so he's like might as well spend the rest of my days trying to hunt down the top two people so I can take the top spot but if you've seen this movie or if I don't know if you're planning on seeing this movie but just a spoiler warning I'm gonna be spoiling this whole movie because honestly there's not much to talk about except for the plot twists okay there's so many twists and turns actually there's not that many twists and turns there's like there's like two twists in this that I I didn't see coming. This video, I'm just gonna kind of go through the movie and then talk about the main points like I always do. So spoilers in case you want to see this and don't want to be spoiled. It starts out pretty normal. I mean, we meet the main guy, Chen Guiding. He's kind of a loner, isn't he? I feel like he's this one man show. This whole movie, he's just kind of by himself. He's kind of well known, okay? He's like third most wanted fugitive in Taiwan. He's pretty proud of himself. You know, he's like, wow, oh, people know me and people think I'm, I mean, there are a group of people that think I'm pretty pretty cool. He's living, living it up. Not, not really. He's just going around. There's this one detective dude that tries to chase him down and they have this long chase that's just fully on foot. And then they fight. The fight is pretty gruesome. The detective loses his eye. It's so dumb because I'm like, why isn't he using his gun? Like just disable him, shoot his leg, do something. There were so many of these moments where it's like, why aren't people using guns? They have guns, but they're not using their guns. He has this one pharmacist doctor friend and this doctor's kind of like an underground doctor. I didn't know there were actually doctors for these people because she works a normal job at a pharmacist. It's not like she's in some cave. So she breaks the news to him. She's like, oh, the report came out. You have stage four lung cancer and you only got a couple months to live at max like six months if you're unlucky you'll be gone in three he's like oh man okay he kind of he kind of is pretty calm about the news i mean he's been smoking for a while so i guess it wasn't a surprise to him she's like well since now you're about to die why don't you just turn yourself in you know turn yourself into the cops he decides to turn himself in but when he goes to the police station he sees the sign on a wall about the most wanted fugitive he sees that he's only ranked number three and nobody even really knows him so he's like kind of but heard about that then he decides to take out the first two. So he goes for a guy number two, some boss from Hong Kong. He kind of just does whatever he wants with the stepdaughter and we all know what that entails. The first half of the movie just felt kind of comedic in like a stupid way. Again, there's another chase on foot and then another hand-to-hand -hand combat fight where he gets injured. And then when finally the Hong Kong guy is down on the ground, basically half dead, William takes out the gun and shoots him. And I'm like, why couldn't you have just shot him in the beginning? Like, dude, you just wasted so much time. Kills guy number two, frees the stepdaughter, who's actually a pretty nice girl. I don't know if there was like some feelings there. I mean, she was happy that he saved her. She was like, oh, my hero. Not really, but like he gives her his car and then she just drives off and then he's just on foot hunting after guy number one. When he tries to look for guy number one, it leads him to this spiritual cult. Didn't expect this movie to be a cult movie. I was just here to watch some gangster thing and then I'm like what is happening this movie was so weird halfway through right after he killed Hong Kong guy and then went to the cult this movie became a different movie there's no more fighting he's just at this cult I don't know what you call these cult gatherings but they're sitting in a room it's like a church everyone's dressed in white cult leader is just sitting there and he's like this very calm dude who is preaching nihilism his whole philosophy was like you have to let go of all of your worldly possessions and then you can cure cancer apparently Wait, goes up to him and he's like, dude, I'm looking for this guy. Do you know him? So he's looking for number one dude, right? Cult leader guy is like, oh, well, he's already dead. He takes him to the grave, tells him the story about how this guy came, didn't want to be saved, and they just let him die. Okay, so he's just buried somewhere there. And then Guiling's like, oh man, oh man, I was too late. He went to eat the food and I thought he was just there to get free food, you know? But yeah, when he's at the church gathering, he ends up like puking randomly and it's all black and there's a lot of black and I thought it was blood. 
thought it was blood because he had lung cancer and whatever, but cult leaders like the reason you puked that black liquid was because you have impurities within yourself or something. It was very strange. If someone told me I puked black water just because I have bad stuff in my system, I'd be like, well, what the heck? Book Lightings gets another freaking CT scan. He goes with cult leader to some hospital. I guess the cult has their own hospital. It looks like a really creepy hospital because the lighting's all weird, but whatever. He goes and they take out a picture another picture CT scan of the lungs and the guy's like I cannot conclusively determine that you have lung cancer and then Gui like oh my god is my lung cancer getting better is this a miracle and then cult leader I don't even know what cult leader says he just reinforces his teachings he's like yeah it's all in your head you have full control of your cancer you can heal from it many people in this cult have healed from cancer on the verge of death they have come back and so Gui uh, at this point he is slowly I mean he's already kind of brainwashed he he gives up all of his possessions. So the thing, the thing about this cult is when you join it, you have to put all of your stuff, all of your belongings, everything of value in this box and they burn it. And when I watched that scene, I was like, really? Because Gui Ling put like a million Taiwanese dollars in his box. And I'm just like, dang, this must be donating to this cult, right? Because I feel like the cult needs money too. So they're just pretending to burn these stuff, right? I already saw this twist coming before they showed it to me. So I was like, yeah, they're not burning it. They're probably taking it. But anyways, he becomes a proactive member of the cult. Everything's all good. It's all good. Until one day, this mom brings her kid to the cult. And the kid is also eating at their cafeteria. When the kid is attending this cult gathering, he also pukes black water. But but he kind of passes out and goes into a coma because he's a kid and I guess his body it was just too much for his body. The mom goes with the cult leader to their sketchy hospital. <laughs> the guy again brings out the exact same picture of the CT scan of a pair of lungs and tells the mom a whole different story about how her son has infection or something. I don't I don't remember the details. But Gui Ling is watching this. He's like secretly eavesdropping and he's seeing all of this. He's realizing that this cult is a huge scam. The black water is actually some sort of poison or whatever that they put in the food so they can sort of trap you into this. Gui Ling actually <laughs> he sneaks into a cult leader's room, finds like this trap door on the floor and he opens it up and there's like this purple light coming out of it and I was like oh my god is this the gateway to hell or like some underground club? <laughs> I don't know the purple lights I'm like it could have been a club but he goes down and it's like this separate room this secret hidden room where there's a couch everything's all super nice on the side of this room there's like this mail room it looks like a mail room and it has all of the boxes of every member who entered the cult and put their possessions in thinking they were gonna be burned but it actually just comes down here into cult leaders secret lair and so he goes back when they're still having a gathering he tells the mom he tries to stop the mom from joining the cult but then cult leader stops him and is like oh we need to get rid of him and so they tried to kill him and they bury him alive in a box but he ends up digging himself out. I guess before all of this, he actually buried his gun somewhere because I don't know. He probably foresaw it or he was like just putting it there for reassurance, but he's just like, I'm just going to put my gun or maybe he wanted to hide the fact that he even brought a gun to the cult. <laughs> At this point, I'm thinking freaking Chen Gui Ling is like Taiwanese Deadpool. I don't know. It's like he cannot die. He was severely injured in so many stages of this movie and he just healed. Dude has stage four lung cancer and he's running around fighting, getting injured, healing, not even, not even dying. He actually goes to the grave of the number one fugitive that the cult leader took him to in the beginning and he digs it up just to make sure. He opens the coffin and there's only a picture of cult leader and his mom and that's when he realizes that freaking cult leader is number one fugitive that he's been looking for this whole time. And so he barges in on the, another one of their gatherings and he shoots cult leader. That was a pretty satisfying scene I will say because he ends up shooting most of the people at that gathering. He actually gave them all a chance to run for their lives, but instead they just stood there and kept singing their freaking song. I was just like, okay, these people deserve to die. And in the end, he finally turns himself in to the detective dude from the beginning. This came out of nowhere, but at the end, it just felt like they had this bromance going on. What? They weren't even close, but okay, in the end, they became like best buddies. I guess he might be just happy that he took out 
the other two fugitives because this whole movie it just felt like Chen Gui Ling was just a hero. So now all three fugitives in Taiwan are gone and it kind of references the Chinese title of this movie. So in the end he's in prison. Doctor Lady comes to visit him and she reveals to him that the whole stage four lung cancer thing was all a lie. She was the actual person that has the lung cancer. She just lied to him because she was hoping it would convince him to turn himself in and then she could actually do something good for once in her life because she feels kind of bad for taking care of all these villains. She didn't know that this would end up even better than she had initially anticipated. That was an interesting twist but I was like wow emotional and actually tied everything together. I know there was a lot of random things that happened in this movie. I enjoyed how crazy it was but it was good because everything at least tied up in the end and then he gets the death penalty. But yeah, this whole movie was like killing three birds with one stone, as <laughs> Underground Doctor Lady was saying. And it was pretty satisfying. But anyways, that's all I had to say. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.